Hi guys, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to our series of Microsoft Intune. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Intune app protection. Now, if you're watching this series from the beginning, in the last video, we have discussed about Intune app deployment, wherein I have showcased what are the different options that you can select to deploy application with different deployment types. Whereas the agenda of this video will be knowing what is Intune MAM app protection, how exactly it works, how the data is protected in applications and what is Intune managed application. Let's understand this from a use case wherein a user is trying to access email on a device that can be iOS or Android. Now, since we know that both of these OS, they, they come with their own native email client app that can be used to configure exchange but what we also know that these applications are not owned by microsoft these applications are not managed by microsoft so in a nutshell as of now the protection is not available for these apps that's the reason why there is a conditional access policy which exists where you can only allow users to access a particular application if they are using approved apps now think about a scenario wherein the user has downloaded Outlook app and now they are trying to access the same email service. Now since this application is owned by Microsoft, all the Intune app protection policies can be applied to this particular application. Now in a nutshell, any application, I'm not talking about only Outlook, any application that understands Intune app protection policy is named as managed application but this doesn't restrict the managed application concept only to Microsoft owned apps think about a scenario wherein your enterprise has developed their own email client and you want to encourage your users to use email client instead of Outlook now in this case of scenarios what all you have to do is you have to either get your application integrated with Intune SDK or get your application wrapped with Intune wrapping tool. Once you have done this, your application will also become an Intune managed application because then your application will start understanding the policies or will start receiving the policies that you are creating in Intune portal. So in a nutshell, there is no requirement of specifically using Outlook. If you think that you can develop an email client and you want that email client to be Microsoft Intune protected or Microsoft Intune managed application, you can do so. Now, there was only one agenda of me showing you this use case because I am discussing an example of email, but in a nutshell, you can create any application and you can get that application integrated with Intune SDK if you want to use Intune app protection. The next slide is the image that I have copied from official document of Microsoft because this is something which will give you more insights in terms of knowing how things work out. I will be sharing the link in the description as well. If possible, please read that article. That's a really good article. Now, think about a scenario wherein a user is using any of this application and he has signed in with the corporate account. Now, if I am a user and I'm using Windows Word application with my corporate identity and in this case, wherein there is no app protection, I can save that document locally on this particular device, as well as I can use any of the other application to share that document. Or I have created a document by using, let's say Excel, I have created a sheet and I can simply copy and paste information to any of the other app. But what does Intune app protection will do for you it will actually restrict all these actions 
between managed and unmanaged app. So as I have addressed before that any application that can understand the app protection policies of Intune is a managed app and those applications which are not managed by Intune or which cannot understand the app protection policies of Intune will be an unmanaged app. A better example will be that I have documented a particular use case, let's say using Windows Word as of now and MAM policies are also in place. App protection policies are also configured. Now, when I copy that information to any of the other Notepad application or let's say Notes application in iOS, I should not be able to do the copy paste. Or one more use case that I have created an Excel document with my corporate identity that I'm now going to save. But when I'm trying to save that document, Excel app is not giving me the option to save it locally on my device. It can only be saved in OneDrive for Business. So in a nutshell, you are protecting the information that belongs to your enterprise to not be shared with the applications which you don't trust or which are unmanaged applications. And this is exactly what Intune app protection is all about. Now let's understand this from one more use case. And that is, it's not only about the app protection. The fact is that user can use any device. It can be a device which is already enrolled in your MDM solution or it can be a user's personal device. And the best part is all these app protection policies that you're going to create and assign to users, they are independent from the device type that a particular user is using. That means the MAM policies will be applied to all kind of devices. Now, since we know that Intune has the capability of acting as an MDM solution as well as MAM solution, but it is not, or it is very, very common scenario that you may work with customer or your own enterprise can have a different solution for MDM, but you still want to use MAM in tune mam capabilities and the answer is yes it is possible but you cannot use in tune mam if you are using any other mam capability or containerization capability from some other service provider so in a nutshell if we talk about in tune mam app protection using mdm service of intune is not a requirement for mam mam and ndm they both are independent service offered by Microsoft Intune and app protection will work on both kind of devices, be it managed or unmanaged device. Now let's talk about a couple of benefits of using app protection policies. The first one is that all these policies get applied to user identity. That means if I am using a device that's been given by my enterprise, MAM policies will work. If I'm using a device that's my personal device, MAM policies are still going to work because all the policies are being mapped to my user identity. The next thing which is very important and that is any of the app protection that you're going to do or any of the policy that you're going to define is not going to impact the user productivity because all these policies will be applied when the enterprise context of an application is launched. And it's not only limited to protect the data in the application. You can also define access level control. That means when an application or Intune managed application is getting launched, there should be a pin. Copy and pasting information from an Intune managed application to third party applications or to unmanaged application is not supported. And lastly, this is the use case which I've also discussed before that you can actually restrict the data that has to be stored in a specific location. So that means what I can have a policy wherein a Word document created through managed app cannot be saved locally 
on a particular device it has to be stored in one drive for business so this was all about knowing the theoretical part related to microsoft in june mam app protection policies and in this video we have specifically seen how exactly app protection works what is a managed application and how exactly the data is protected inside the applications in the next video i'm going to show you how to create app protection policies now it requires a lot of research and a lot of time for us to create all the content that you see on our channel if you have learned something new please feel free to subscribe thank you so much bye bye